Today's lesson is fractional exponents. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through as much of the problems as I can. And then what we'll do is we'll be setting you up to do problems in the notes. I'll give you the basic outline for the work and then the sol and then I'll put the solutions up at the end of the day on Tuesday. Now, I'll give you basic examples for each page of work. You can get a copy of this note on the website and the note will have the questions that you will work on for the day. So for this lesson, you're going to have to use your own calculators and the calculators will help you to develop a pattern that we're going to follow for this lesson. Now, let's evaluate the following. So if I have 36 to the 1 half, if you want to be able to do that on your calculator, you're going to write 36 to the exponent. Some of you will have that and you go 1 divided by 2. And you get your answer to be 6. You'll do the same for each one of these problems that we have here. I'll give you a minute and then pause right here, do the problems and we'll take a look at the solution. And you get 10 here, you get uh, 2, and this last one you get 3. In general, fraction, in general, basically, when we're talking about fractional exponents, if we have x to the 1 over n, it's the same as the nth root of x. Now, you used to do this before on your calculators. Now, some of you, in order to get, let's say I had an example of uh, 8 to the 1 third. On your calculator, you would write, some of you would write 3 on your calculator, and then you'd hit shift, and you would hit shift, and then the x to the blank on your calculator to get what you're looking for, or the y to the x in order to get what you're looking for, and then put the number 8. Now, the sequence changes from between different, between different calculators, so take a moment and speak with your teacher about that. So now, when we write x to the 1 over n, in order to show what it means, this is what I say, show what each expression means, what it means. And then, when we do our calculations, we show what it means, and then we go and change it into the appropriate answer. So idea, we if we have something to the 1 over x to the 1 over n, what we're going to do is we're immediately going to change it to what it means and then give us the answer as our final answer by using our calculator or using our head. Now remember, the numbers that we can use are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, and 10. Let's go 11 and 12. I don't think we'll go any farther than 12. Um, for this for this first one, when we have 81 to the 1 half, we can write this as you're going to show what me what the expression means. So we're going to get the square root of 81. So I need two numbers that multiply to 81. So I'll just put this in the side here. So in my head, I'm thinking... What number squared is equal to 81? And in that case, that number is 9. Ooh. And now we'll do the same for 27 to the 1 third. So we write it in our radical form immediately. So we get the third root of 27 
And then the third root of 27 is, well, what number times itself three times gives 27? And that number is three. Now I'm not going to do that bubble for the rest of these. So for this problem here, Anything in the bracket will go underneath the radical sign. So we got negative 64, and we still have a 3 there. So what number times itself 3 times gives us negative 64? Now this is a possibility because, remember, anytime the, ra anytime the negative sign's underneath the square root, also known as the radical sign, you have to have an odd number for the exponent, for the radical, in order for us to be able to calculate properly. If not, it's a do not, it's a DNE or no solution. So this number, so I'm gonna check it out here. One, two doesn't work, three doesn't work, and I think this is the number, four or negative four. So I'm gonna try negative four on my calculator. Negative four cubed gives me Negative 64, so we're good. Negative 4. All right, this next one. We have, we're going to write out what it means, and then basically when we know what this means, we can decide whether this exists or not. Okay, so we have a negative operand underneath the radical. So we have a negative operand underneath the radical, and the exponent is even. So that's an impossible solution based on what we studied in the last lesson. So this is does not exist because you can't find something to the power of 4 does not give, can only give a positive answer. Right? Now if that's the case that means that this is impossible. So remember, so for the last one, we have negative, negative 64 to the 1 sixth. Now, just remember, it was just like when we worked with our exponents. The negative sign is sitting directly beside, is uh, sitting directly beside the exponent. And it's just the exponent here that is applied to the number that's directly beside it. Because the negative sign is not in a bracket with the 64, we have to imagine that the negative sign is just sitting there. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna write 64 to the one over six. And then we have negative, and then we're looking for the sixth root of 64. The sixth root of 64. That is going to be, so our answer is negative 30. Nope, it's not 32. 32 is too big. The answer is negative 2. The final answer is negative 2. Now, your homework for today is to evaluate the questions on the worksheet on your own. Show all the steps. What you probably want to do is you want to make sure you start on the right, start on the right side here for each one of these, and then start going down for each, for each question. This will save you space and time. Good luck kids. The next part of the lesson is what would happen if our exponents don't look like one over some number? Let's say it looks like this, right? Here's the big hint. You know that one half times three is the same as one half times three over one, right? Now, 3 over 1 times 1 half gives us, hey, 3 over 2. 
Now, if you take a look at our first problem that we have here, right? I'm actually giving you a hint based on all of this. Based on all of this. So what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and use the power of a power for exponents. So let's do this right away. So when we punch this in the calculator, eventually we're going to come up with something that works really nicely. But when we punch it in the calculator, we get, well, the third, we would write 16 to the, well, 3 divided by 2, and you'd get 64. For this one here, we'd write 27 to the, well, 2 divided by 3, and notice I got that in brackets. So now what we're going to do, get 9. And in this case, we get 9 as our final answer. Now, the fifth root... We get 100,000 for this last one. Okay, so now, in general, this is what's happening. In general, basically, you just need to realize that x to the m over n is the same as the nth root of x all raised to the m. We're actually using the power of a power. So you remember if I had something like this, x to the a times x to the b, I'd get x to the a times b. We studied that before. You knew that in grade 11. And we're using that to actually break our fraction into two parts. So here's what we're going to write. To show the evaluation, we're not we're going to skip one step. I don't want to go and show something like this in order to get this. Get this right. So here's what we're going to do. We break our problem into two parts. So we break it up and we write, well, we write our 25 and we know that we have a square root sign and it's going to be all in a bracket raised to something else. Notice the 2 is going on the inside with the root because that's the denominator of the fraction in our exponent and the 3 goes outside. Now we use Bedmus and evaluate the square root of 25 inside the bracket. The square root of 25 in the bracket is 5 and we still have the cube on the outside. So 5 cubed is 125. And there we get our final answer. So that is essentially what I'm expecting to see when I say show all the steps and evaluate the following. So let's do the same for the next problem here. 16 to the 7 fourths. So we're going to write 16 and we have a radical sign and then on the inside, the 4 from the denominator goes on the square root, and the 7 goes on the outside. So now, we take the 4th root of 16, and that just happens to be 2. And then, we still have 2 left in our bracket, and it's raised to the power of 7. And 2 to the 7 is just 128. We'll follow the same steps for the final problems. Now notice our next problem is negative 27 all raised to the 4 over 3. The negative 27 is in the bracket, so we're going to have to put it underneath the radical sign. Negative 27. We put our root sign and we put our information in. So remember, the bottom portion of the fraction goes on the radical sign, on the square root. And the outside number is the 4. So we look for the third root of negative 27. We calculated that last time and we got negative 3 raised to the 4. And we'll have negative 3 to the 4 is 81. 
we'll do the same for negative 64. So negative 64, we put our radical sign and we square root it and we put a five there. Now, is it possible to take the square root of a negative number? No, it's not. So since we go and try to look at this number in the inside here and we can't calculate it, there is no solution. No solution, DNE. No solution. Or you could have put, or you could put does not exist. Now, here are the problems that I want you to work on today. Now, for these problems, you're going to use, you're going to show all the steps like we did before, right? Like here. And you're going to do all these problems on your own. It's just six problems. No biggie. The big trick for this last one is leave the negative sign for F. I want you to leave the negative sign alone and just work with the radical in a bracket. Okay. For these next problems, we have some issues to work out. We have 144 to the negative a half. We take a look at our problem. We take a look at our equation that we have here. If we have negative m over n, we basically write it as 1 over the square root of x to the m. It's just using that reciprocal rule that we used a long time ago. So for the first problem, the first example, we have 144 to the negative 1 half. So here's what we're going to do right away. We're going to just write 1 over, well, we're going to put the root sign of 144. And it's raised to whatever power is on the top. It's a 1, not a negative 1. On the, on the bottom is 2. So now we get, well... 1 over 12 to the 1, which is just 1 over 12. The next problem here, we have negative 8. We have 8 to the negative 2 thirds. So we're going to write this as 1 over the root of 8. Now, the bottom of the fraction goes on the radical. And we raise that to the 2. And because it's been moved down, it becomes positive in our exponent. So... We take the third root of 8, which is 2. So I'm going to write 1 over 2 to the 2. On our calculator, we get 1 over 4. And the last one. Negative 1 over 6, negative 64. So we're going to write 1 over the third root of negative 64 squared. Now... You can calculate, you can calculate the third root of negative 64. The third root of negative 64 is just negative 4. And you know that's going to work because that, neg that negative sign requires an odd power. So we get 1 over negative 4 squared. So negative 4 squared gives us 16. We get 1 over 16 as our final answer. Now your turn for the work today are these problems right here. I'll put the solutions to the problems on the web after I've produced the video for this assignment. You'll get the solutions at the end of the day on Thursday. So somewhere around 3 o'clock the solutions will start going up. But I want you to do all the questions that you see here. Ask your teacher for assistance should you need it.